Today we're tackling a sensitive subject. I'll toe the line between trigger warning and educator while attempting to appease a notoriously sensitive YouTube algorithm that is quick to censor any video that alludes, even loosely, to certain unsavory subjects. By now, many of you have probably heard about how Max Major hung himself live on Kai Sinat's Subathon Twitch stream. If this absurd piece of information is news to you, Here's the spark notes. Max Major, a YouTube magician, appeared on Kai Snat's Twitch stream, where he was scheduled to perform a magic trick. Only his so-called magic trick involved putting a noose around his neck and asking Kai to pull a lever that would, unbeknownst to Kai, cause the rope to pull upwards, effectively hanging Max live on stream. So, What the hell, bro? This is an all around L, as they say, on so many levels. And as usual, we have quite the lesson ahead of us. We'll compare the terrifying physiology of an actual hanging, no video, I promise, to Max's stunt performance. And in doing so, gain some perspective on A, why Max was willing to put himself in danger this way, and B, just how disrespectful this stunt is to the viewer, especially those living with or adjacent to those living with mental illness. What confuses me the most is that at this point, Kai's stream is big business. Big sponsors like Nike and McDonald's, big viewership and big money, both numbering in the millions. Now, I'm not here to point fingers. I'm just genuinely surprised that a stunt like this somehow slipped through the cracks to appear live before hundreds of thousands of people. There's one final game I prepared for you guys tonight, but I need to go make sure that everything is ready. Someone, somewhere, thought that this was a good idea and pulled the strings necessary to execute the plan. Puns not intended. Somebody's gonna come and get you. And there's one last game we're gonna play. Hey, how long? No. A few minutes. While someone else, somewhere else, didn't sufficiently review Max's plan before giving it the green light. What, what you about to do? I need everybody to listen. Or maybe it was all on purpose. Who knows? But I will leave the extensive socio-cultural analysis of the event to creators like Hassan Abi or Phil DeFranco. In an attempt to keep our conversation centered on the body, health literacy, and the medical social implications of such a crass event. Now, our lesson will benefit from taking a look at several key moments from the stream, though I won't show the actual hanging portion because, well, we're on YouTube. I might get banned. Before we go any further, I wanna take a moment for anyone who's ever lost a loved one or who has had life-ending thoughts. I feel for you and I'm sorry you've had to go through that. I myself, have struggled with these thoughts in the past, so I can understand how this feels. Now, if you still wanna hear my analysis of the stunt from a medical perspective, keep watching. Immediately, we can see that Max's setup is somewhat complicated. This isn't a random rope hanging from a door frame. There is a platform, pulleys, rigging, and a box below. Now, historically, in a public execution, which unfortunately took place in parts of the United States until the 1930s, the gallows platform was likely to have a trap door in it. This mechanism, also known as a drop door or falling door, allowed the person being executed to drop from a height, typically between five to 10 feet, which would usually break the neck, causing instantaneous death. That's right, humans had hangings down to a science. First time. A perfectly calculated drop combined with the tightening of the rope, would snap the head up and back, forcing the neck into hyperextension. The result was often either a dislocation of the C2 vertebrae from the C3 vertebrae below it, or a fracture at the C2 vertebrae in the characteristic hangman's pattern. You see, the C2 vertebrae is uniquely susceptible to fracture dislocation and hangings due to several anatomical and biomechanical factors. Think of it like a weak link in the chain with a small peg that sticks up, making it vulnerable. When the neck is stretched, 
The force concentrates at the C2 level, causing it to break or dislocate, which can severely damage the spinal cord in the vertebral canal. For any hardcore gamers in my audience, you may have seen the Path of Exile team depict the gallows in their character selection screen to maximize dramatic impact. And I could be wrong, but I feel like this historical version of hanging immediate and very deadly is what comes to mind for most people when they hear the word. However, not all gallows had trap doors. Some used a simple rope and beam design where the person was propped up on a platform or stool that was then removed. On that basis alone, this stunt is off limits. That is to say, don't go there, bro. Not for shock value, not for entertainment purposes, not to send a message to Kai. To me, it fails to treat a very serious topic with the reverence it deserves. The twisted irony is that the same measures that Max took to ensure his own safety draw a parallel to the manner in which someone who intends to end their own life might approach the deed. That is to say, a prisoner hung on the gallows dies in an instant, a broken neck being the cause of death. When someone does it to themselves, the process is longer. There is more suffering involved and the cause of death is typically strangulation. Seeing that there was no trap door in Max's setup, when Kai pulls the lever, a counterweight drops to the ground and lifts Max by the neck into the air. For those of you that have seen the video, I want to draw your attention to a few more things. In the moment leading up to the hanging, the rope around Max's neck is already taut, and so is the rope attached to the counterweight, which will lift him into the air. A simple pulley helps to remove slack from both ends of the rope, while relieving any major pressure off Max's neck, until the moment that he has planned to be hung. What's it gonna be? Any, many, many more cats take a bite, so if you wanna let it go, let it go, let it go. My mom told me to pick this one. We outside in the basketball court right now with Max Major. I don't know what the f to do right now, so I'ma just randomly pick this one. All this to say that I don't believe Max was ever in danger of cervical fracture, dislocation, or catastrophic damage to the spinal cord. There is no snap, fall, crack, or immediacy to the so-called hanging. I do not show this to you to make light of the situation, though if you take it that way, I will understand. This is a wild clip to share at this point in the video and the music doesn't help. But it is important that I direct your attention to the strength inherent in the neck when a person is prepared to distribute their weight on it. The sternocleidomastoid, trapezius, levator scapulae, suboccipital muscles, longest coli, and the longest capital muscles work together to support the entire weight of the body. Muscles aside, the neck is made up of seven cervical vertebrae held together by approximately 22 to 25 tendons and 40 to 50 ligaments of surprising strength. These connect muscles to bones and bones to each other, providing stability and support. The human body is actually quite robust. That's why orthopedic surgeons are no stranger to a little elbow grease. But I digress. So Max's feet leave the platform at 54 seconds. And there is no jump scare coming here. When I do press play, I only intend to show you the time elapsing while we listen to the audio. There's no argument here. As soon as Max is in the air, he is in danger. He is unlikely to break or dislocate his neck as we've already established, but he cannot avoid strangulation forever. It's only a matter of time. When the carotid arteries that supply the brain with oxygen are compressed, oxygenated blood cannot reach the brain. And although the brain can survive for around four to six minutes without oxygen before suffering permanent damage, loss of consciousness typically occurs within 30 seconds to two minutes due to cerebral hypoxia, meaning lack of oxygen in the brain, which is our most oxygen hungry organ. Depending on the circumstances, time until unconsciousness may be much shorter. You know what I'm scared of? UFC fighters. You know why? Because they're real. In the UFC, fighters often lose consciousness due to chokeholds in way less than 30 seconds. Eight to 10 seconds is not unusual. This rapid loss of consciousness can be attributed to several factors. When a fighter struggles or exerts muscular force, their oxygen consumption increases. Additionally, the adrenaline and stress responses triggered by the chokehold further boost oxygen consumption and heart rate. Touch a pressure point, shut your whole body down. Bow. <laughs> 
It's a wrap. All that. As a result, blood pressure and cerebral blood flow are affected, leading to a faster onset of hypoxia. Ultimately, the increased oxygen demand caused by struggling and stress responses accelerates the loss of consciousness. Okay. Now let's rewind and put that all together. Here we have Max standing on the platform, prepared to be lifted by his neck, knowing full well that his muscles can adequately support his weight and that no sudden snap will jeopardize the structural integrity of his cervical spine. It is in his best interest to keep muscle exertion to a minimum while remaining as calm as possible to delay the consumption of oxygen in his system as long as possible. If you've seen the video, Max does indeed remain calm, flexing his muscles in anticipation, but without moving very much or struggling at all. The video quality isn't the best, but he also looks to be gasping for air in a very intentional practice pattern. I'd wager Max and his team practiced this stunt many times beforehand. His body hits the ground and strangulation ceases at the one minute and one second mark. So. Max was suspended by his neck for approximately seven seconds. And yes, I've reviewed the video more times than I'd like to admit, both for the sake of science and so that you don't have to. It's obvious that his team was prepared for this possibility and well rehearsed to counteract the danger involved. What I neglected to mention before, but that we must also consider is the location of the rope. Again, I won't show this, but it's rather high on Max's neck. The carotid arteries are definitely compressed, but they aren't the only arteries that supply the brain with oxygenated blood. In fact, if the rope is high enough on the neck, it's possible that the vertebral arteries remain patent and continue to carry out this function. Since the stunt setup keeps tension on the rope, it remains higher on Max's neck, leading up to the hanging and keeps the vertebral arteries out of harm's way. I think in this case, we're looking at a reduction in cerebral blood flow, but probably not a complete cessation. The brain might still receive some oxygenated blood through the vertebral arteries, albeit at a reduced rate, buying max more time. But reading through all the comments on the various videos and listening to others comment on the incident, a lot of this information was overlooked. When I watched the footage, I was surprised. I felt like I was watching some wild form of chiropractic treatment. And in this case, there isn't even the sharp movement that we've come to expect from the sudden snap of say, the Y strap. Earlier on, I alluded to the fact that death by hanging without the trap door and sudden fatal fall and snap mechanism was considered inhumane because the victim's suffering was drawn out. In attempting to make the stunt survivable, Max, perhaps unintentionally, recalls this type of hanging live on stream where many of the viewers are minors. And statistically, some of them are also likely to be suffering from depression with concurring battle thoughts. From what I understand, Max's intention was to get back at Kai, who has called him out for fake magic in the past. Well, to prioritize payback over the implications that we've just discussed is outlandish. Not to mention the socio-cultural undertones that again, I will leave to other creators with a firmer grasp on the subject. If you found anything in this video helpful, then all I ask is that you leave a comment to help the algorithm. This will help us to grow the channel so that we can create more engaging videos about human anatomy for you. We're working towards a goal of 1 million subs and we hope that we will have you with us when we get there. Otherwise, as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, teach one.